Now for anyone new here, my name's Rich, and as the name of the channel suggests, I'm a wildlife photographer. And more often than not, when I'm traveling around the countryside photographing wildlife, I'm doing so within my self-converted Volkswagen T4 camper van. Now since setting up this channel, this van has featured in many of my videos. And I've also received quite a few requests from people asking me to make a video all about the van and whether or not I converted it myself. So that's exactly what today's video is going to be about. The van, as I've already mentioned, is a Volkswagen T4, which I purchased back in 2000 in Jersey. And since then, the van has been all over with me. And it's become not only a vehicle to get me to and from locations, but it's also become my home away from home, my office, and at times, even occasionally a wildlife photography hide. It came as a blank canvas, and although it had been well maintained, it was a million miles away from where I wanted it to be. But over the last two years, I've really enjoyed this project. Now, before we jump into it, I would just like to point out that this is the first van conversion I've done, and I am forever making mistakes and changing my mind with things, which I guess is exactly why I picked this particular day to give you all a van tour. Now, today's video is gonna be a little bit different, and that's because over the last few months, in fact, pretty much since setting up the channel, I've received quite a few messages from people asking me to do a video on my camper van and basically what's inside, did I convert it myself and um, what I basically pack when I go away on photography trips. Now I have to be honest, I've kind of been putting this video off because I've never really been at the point where I'm happy enough with the van to share it with other people. And then I figured, I'm probably not going to get to that point because I've got a list so large of things that I want to do to this van and it seems like every time I tick something off I add a couple more things on so I think it's just going to be a continuous project and recently I had to empty the van I had to completely gut it out um, because I needed all the space to move some stuff around and I thought hey there's probably never been a better time than now whilst the van's a blank canvas to show you guys kind of how I built it, what the bed's like, how I do my cooking, what equipment I pack. So that's what we're gonna to do today in today's video. First thing I need to do is clean the floor because I was moving some plasterboard and uh, it's a complete and utter mess. So I'm gonna clean the floor and then start putting the units back in, put the bed in, and I'll talk you through kind of how I built things and why. And um, hopefully the video's not too boring, but this is for people that asked. So that's the floor kind of clean. I'll give it another clean once everything's in because I'm just going to keep making a mess whilst I'm rebuilding the furniture. So I'm now going to grab the units and uh, pop them back in and then the bed. Okay, so the unit's in, at least the first one is, and um, they've not really fared very well over the last few weeks in the barn. Um, originally when I built these, I put on this kind of like fake wood effect. I don't know, I got it from B&Q, you just stick it on and from a distance it kind of looks okay. I figured that it would last a little bit longer than this, but I think it just hasn't fared very well over the last, um, yeah, like I say, the last month or so. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually strip all this off and paint these units. I was thinking about doing that at some point anyway, and I didn't think I'd do it this soon, but um, I think that's gonna look better then, because at the moment, it's just peeling off, so I may as well just do it now. So that's all of the uh, plastic fake wood effect removed from the units now, and I've even, had to do a bit of wood filler over the screws. Um, so I've done that. And whilst I'm waiting for the filler to dry, um, because I can't prime it really until I've sanded the filler back. So whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna get in the next lot of units, which just go at the back of the van. And um, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to do the same thing to that as well. Thank you. 
a few moments later. Well, that took a little bit longer than expected, but I finally have the units. I had to take them out of the van um, because I decided it was probably easier to sand them, prime them, paint them outside of the van. So I took them out, did exactly that, and uh, they're now back in, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's, um, I just used some leftover paint that I had in the loft, and uh, yeah, they've come out all right. So um, that's the units back in. So the next thing we've got to do is get the bed in and I'll talk you through how I built that and why I decided to do it the way I did. So I now have the bed back in, which is um, pretty cool. I'm chuffed about that. It went in relatively easily. So I feel like the van's coming together. And as you can see from the footage, I built the bed so it kind of slots into itself. And it's just because it saves so much space in the day. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it gives me a longer kind of area to sleep on. Um, and it sounds like both myself and my wife stay in it all the time and there's plenty of space. So um, yeah, the bed works really well. It's just missing the foam now, um, which will go on as a mattress, which I'll put on shortly. Um, and then it's just about loading the van up with um, putting the cool box in, uh, the stove that I cook with, and I'll show you all of that stuff as well. Once the bed was back in, it was then time to start putting everything back in the cupboards, like the gas stove and the fridge along with some of the food, coffee, cleaning products and the first aid kit. Just things like that. I'm still at the point where I haven't invested in anything particularly expensive in this van, like leisure batteries. And in fact, even my lights are just run off rechargeable batteries. But they do the job. I've done this whole van build on a budget really. And that includes how I cook. I currently use just a single portable gas stove and it works absolutely fine. Of course, it restricts me to cooking one thing at a time, but it also means that I'm able to cook outdoors. Storage for me is paramount in this van build. And having previously built in sinks and hobs, I realized quite quickly that I'd much rather have that space for other things, like more space for a bigger bed and more space to store more camera equipment and things like that. Another thing worth mentioning is that when I'm away in the van, especially when I'm away on my own, um, I always turn these front two seats around. So I'm fortunate enough that I've got a double um, passenger seat here and I always just turn it around so that it's facing back into the van. And that gives me one, a lot more space in the back of the van and two, somewhere to work during the day. So in between going out photographing, um, because quite often we're photographing first thing in the morning and again in the evening. So in the middle of the day, it means that I've got somewhere where I can sit and I've got a little fold out desk table and I set that up and I just sit here and just work away on editing videos, editing images, emailing clients, whatever it is. Um, it just means that by having these seats this way, I've got somewhere I can sit comfortably upright rather than just being low down on the bed and get that done. Now, one of the things I haven't actually discussed with you yet about the van is how much it's all cost. Now, I'm happy to be completely open and honest about all of this, but to start, I don't fully know. I know that the van cost me £2,750 and I purchased this van in Jersey, where I grew up, um, just over two years ago now. And it was originally bought and we were using it as a van where we'd go off down the beach and we'd go surfing and just chill out, watch the sunset. And that was great. So then when I got to Devon, I decided to convert it myself. And I fought long and hard about going out, buying rock and roll beds and, you know, getting it professionally converted. But I decided that for what I need it for, it just wasn't going to be worth it. So I essentially built it mostly out of just reclaimed stuff that I had around the place. So the bed was made from timber from an old bed, an old single bed. And I just used the old slats. Um, the units was offcuts of MDF and an old piece of um, top that I just used. So actually when I was thinking about how much it's probably cost me to convert it, I think I'm completely over egging it if I said I've spent about four or 500 pounds on it. So if you think the van cost me under 3,000, I've probably spent less than 500 pounds. All in all, that's including the cool box, the little portable stove, which I know probably amazes you because it's such an incredible stove. Um, but yeah, I reckon I haven't spent 
much more than 3,000 300 pounds on this van and i think that's pretty inexpensive in the grand scheme of things you know it's a it's an occasional home on wheels it's accommodation it saves me money now when i go to the cairngorms i used to have to stay in airbnbs i now just sleep in the van so it's essentially saving me money yes diesel is extremely expensive now yes things go wrong with older vehicles every now and again like the rust and you have to pay to get it treated but I think in the grand scheme of things, it's actually been a really, really affordable way of running this business actually, and just running the lifestyle that I have. So I'm really, really happy about that. Well, I'm pretty sure that concludes most things for now. So I'm gonna end the video here. I just want to reiterate again that this is nowhere near finished and the to-do list for this van is still ever growing. I do plan on bringing you more videos of me being away in the van soon. So if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. And for the almost 3,000 of you that have already subscribed, I just want to say thank you. Your support means the world. Okay, I'm now about to jump in the van and head up to Somerset to meet up with my friend Sophie to film a couple more videos. So stay tuned for those and I'll see you on the next one.